It's good to see you guys again. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Congratulations. Very, very well because this season is excellent yet again. You guys are awesome. All right. I'm going full spoilers here so you could talk freely and we will run it after the season comes out. Nice. Jacob, I'm coming your way first with probably a too complicated question here because I have like a million things to ask about the Hawk, but I'll go yeah. into harder. First, what was your reaction to first finding out that Hawk would lose the Hawk? And then is there anything about losing the Hawk and the way that he carried himself before that gave you access to something new in the character that you didn't even realize was there before? Yeah, so um, losing the Hawk was something they had first joked about like in season one or two of like oh yeah that would be kind of cool to see what happens like you know he's super cool because of his mohawk but what would happen if he lost it um and then season three came around and they're like yeah you know we're thinking maybe season five we'll, we'll do, could do the mohawk or whatever and i was like oh well, okay and then season four came out and they're like yeah we're doing it we're doing it this season and i was like oh shoot it, it felt like it came so suddenly um and I, I was pretty bummed. I was like, oh, man, that's my thing. Like, I, I like it. Um, so I was a little bummed, but I, it really did open up new um, parts of the character because it, it was totally like, you know, what is King Arthur without his sword type of thing? Um, and it was fun to get to explore that and sort of um, dive into uh, being Eli again and just having really good people around him, like, you know, Dimitri. The binary brother uh there to pick him up and the good influence of johnny and daniel they're uh picking him up uh but yeah it was it was really fun to get to be eli and feel okay as eli gianni for you yeah. i feel like all of the main characters on the show have kind of turned to the dark side to a degree with their karate at one point or another, but not Dimitri. And I know we don't really know all that much about his background and his home life at this point, but for you, what quality of Dimitri and things going on off screen that we don't get to see, do you think contributes to him being able to keep control and never let the anger take over? Uh, I like to think, um, you know, Dimitri has always been kind of this nerdy sort of character and uh, I created a background for him and kind of a, a family home life uh, to kind of justify some of the things that Dimitri does. Um, just kind of like parents that, you know, really instill, hey, don't be a bully, you know, that's important. And um, yeah, I, I just kind of think it's cool that Dimitri has always been this nerd and he's never really compromised um, going to the dark side, even though he's had many opportunities to join Cobra Kai, even though it's, you know, one resulted in him getting flipped and then another time getting his nose broken. But yeah, yeah, Dimitri and will never be a dark sided individual. I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know I, it's not going to be canon in the show, but can you share any details about the backstory that you've personally come up with that's kind of helped serve as a guiding light for you throughout the show? Yeah, I, I always get nervous sharing it because then I, I don't want it to be like later on the writers be like, no, that's not what it is at all. I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I'm working with what I have. You know, he only just got a last name in uh, season four. And, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he only just got a last name, but we we still don't know his uh, home life. But I, I can imagine... What? Yeah, he's Greek. Greek. <laughs> I, I have a Greek nose, so it works. Why not? Um, but I kind of like to imagine his home life is maybe it's uh, like a single mom that's kind of a paralegal or something like that. So she's she's pretty smart, but uh, she doesn't have like a lot of time to be around. And that's how I kind of justify, you know, her not being at the tournament or being there when he breaks his arm, because I feel like that would be a big thing. But um, yeah. An interesting thing to consider. I appreciate you sharing that. All right, Cholo, I think by far one of the most effective performance beats in the entire season is your reaction to drunk Johnny in <gasps> episode eight, particularly oh the extreme emotional roller coaster of it, because he he feels like the two most extreme responses based on what Johnny says in that beat. So is something like that especially challenging for you? And how do you prepare yourself to go on that emotional journey in one single scene? 
Yeah, uh, that was a that was I mean, honestly, those types of scenes are my favorite ones to film, especially with Billy. Like, I, I feel like we've kind of had one of those every season. Like we had, you know, the one in that burger shop in the second season. We had we had actually a few this this fourth season. But, you know, I, I think when it comes down to it, you I what gives me the most comfort is knowing that like at the core Miguel wants to make Johnny proud. And especially in season four, how we see this new aspect getting involved of like this, you know, it always was kind of like an unsaid fatherly figure, but now that, you know, Johnny's getting busy with my mom, like it, now it really is like a father figure. And it, I think that regardless as to whether or not it's said does add like a new layer of responsibility for Johnny. And I think that's kind of what just makes it so much more heartbreaking <laughs> for Miguel when he's like, finally, the words I've been waiting for all these years are followed by like, I hate the, the guy. Like, yeah, yeah, no, not even like, I, not even like anger. Cause I don't think it's angry. I think it's just like, oh man, like it's, it's not me. Like it's, it's not, it's, and that, that was a really fun day though. That, that was a really good one. And, and Billy gave a really great performance too in, in that scene. Like that's, it was, it's, it's hard to see Billy look like that because he's like not at all like a drunk or anything like that in real life. So it's funny just seeing him flip that, flip that switch. But th th that was a really fun day. And, and uh, it was a little bit hard, but honestly, I don't, um, I like after stuff like that happens, you kind of just got to, all right, let's move on to the next day. You can't, you can't get too focused on it. Otherwise, you'll just be like, "Oh man, this sucks." Every, oh, like they, these scenes are way too hard. But, uh, but uh, no, it, it was a great day. I'm glad to hear you call it fun because I was emotionally exhausted after that scene. But I love the season so much. You guys know how much I love the show. Huge congratulations yet again, and until season five. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice to see you again, Perry. You too. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again. Later.